Okay, welcome back to the Investigative Journal on this June 23rd, 2016 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony, and you're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. You can listen to my show every evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's Pacific Time on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Also, you can listen to the show at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, or if you can't... uh, catch either of those two shows, go to my long-running website, A-R-C-T-I-C-B-E-A-C-O-N.com, arcticbeacon.com, where you can get stories going back over a decade regarding the main topic of our show, the Vatican-led New World Order. And I say that uh, because no one else really covers this side of the story as in-depth as we do here. That's why we are called the alternative to the alternative news. It's no secret the mainstream news is now state-controlled, totally. Uh, And also the Internet is filled with co-intel operatives who are giving you only half the truth, maybe not even that much. And they're leading you into the wrong direction about many, many things. And so what I always said was, why not discuss this topic? And no better way to start this show than to say all week I've been spending time looking at the possibility of World War III beginning before the November elections in America and the signs and symbols that they may. Now, on a couple of our shows, we looked at things from the point of view of a geopolitical point of view of what's really going on in the Ukraine, what's going on in Syria, what's going on all over the Middle East, North Korea, and why that is not uh, important enough to lead off many of the mainstream shows. You hear it on the alternative media, and what you get from other sources, for example, certain news outlets in Israel, things like that. And the one part of the story that seems to get overlooked, albeit there's one show called Israeli News that touches on it, is the fact that the Vatican is involved up to their dirty necks in this whole story. No one will argue that the Vatican Bank has been used as a money laundering operation for the better part of my lifetime. And I can imagine what happened uh, before that, during uh, when the Vatican was given statehood again, when the beast was now, the wound was healed, and I believe it was the 1920-something, nine, when Mussolini did that, a dictator, the Vatican in bed with him. They've been in bed with Hitler, Stalin, and also all of the democratic countries in the world. They play both sides of the coin, so to speak, and they make a lot of coins by doing that. In fact, uh, why isn't the story ever covered? The Vatican is looked at as a holy institution by the mainstream media and by most of the alternative, and that is a big mistake. When you start looking at this war on terror, where it came from, how it began, we did that. We showed you the roots of terrorism dating back to, let's look at Operation Gladio, where Pope Pius XII was involved with the OSS in our country, uh, in Rome, creating uh, the money needed to fund uh, terrorism, so to speak. This was the beginning when they were using rebel groups. They needed money to combat communism, which they also created. So you had this chaos between the West and communism. Uh, When that uh, was over, they had to continue another strategy. And that was also the strategy of tension in what you're seeing now in global terrorism. It's never discussed how it's funded, and when you look closely, it's funded by the West, and the Vatican plays a very big role still in cleaning the money, laundering the money that's needed to fund these operations and to keep it away from the prying eyes of uh, federal regulators, so to speak. It's a hidden story, but it goes deeper than just geopolitics. You have what's going on now is something called radical Islamic terror, and during this period of time, you're, you're hearing stories from overseas about beheadings, this, this growth of this terrorist group called ISIS that is unbelievable. 
Where did they get their money? How did this happen so quickly? Is it that the wars are orchestrated? Of course they are. Now, when you look at ISIS, you're seeing in America now these lone wolves uh, uh, going into places like uh, Sandy Hook. Uh, you're going into places like uh, recently in Orlando. And all of these, if you look closely, are nothing more than false flag hoaxes. And the reason being is that they want to take away your Second Amendment rights and get the guns out of the hands of people so that when martial law is declared, uh, we can't protect ourselves. And when the you-know-what hits the fan, the American population is without a way to protect itself. Now, could this happen quickly? Of course it could. Now, when you're looking now at this strategy of tension, you're having, it's so obvious, uh, when you look at what's going on in the House of Representatives today, the Democrats are sitting there like little school children on the floor, taking little selfies, showing that they're not going to do anything until gun laws are passed to their uh liking. The Republicans, of course, are heading the House with Speaker Ryan, have adjourned the House, meaning that they're in violation of the law. They're also in violation of the law in taking pictures of the House. They're violating the rules of a democratic system, which doesn't matter to them. Here's the situation. Charlie Rangel from New York, a Democrat, stated this today, or maybe it was yesterday. He stated that no law-abiding citizen should be able to own a gun in America. And one person asked him, well, what about you? You have bodyguards with guns. What about you? And he said, well, that is different. Of course it is. He's one of the elite. There's no reason for Americans not to have law-abiding citizens uh, weapons to protect themselves. And in fact, when you start looking at these false flag hoaxes, you'll see that this is basically leading up to a huge conflict. Now, in America, our eyes have been on this for a week and a half or two weeks. It's always something. Then our eyes have been on the elections, which to me are nothing more than a, uh, the, the right and the left playing this game of the Hegelian dialectic, where your vote will not count. What's happened is America's asleep at the wheel. You're not critical thinkers anymore. You're going to listen to what the government tells you. And if you watch the clips that they give you about Orlando, you're going to see that they couldn't. <laughs> it was a hoax of all hoaxes. Now, they want to take your guns. And the point I'm trying to make is what we're doing this week is looking at the real story, the buildup of weapons in, uh, in surrounding Russia by NATO and America, also the buildup uh, regarding this conflict in Syria, leading to a huge conflict between the powers that be. I also stated that they all work together at the top levels, and they're creating this situation of t tension so that they can do one thing. They can create a chaos, create a world war that is important for them to do one thing, and that is to depopulate this world. And by that, they will gain control, and they will gain their new world order, their one world order, their one world government, and the most important of all, they can't have that without a one world religion. That's where the Vatican comes into play. Now, I've been showing you information this week that possibly something could happen before November. 2016 has been a big day, a big, a big, big, big year for them. Now, remember, I look to the Hollywood movies sometimes, and Back to the Future is probably the biggest coded movie you'll ever see, and they do point out, it was made in the 80s, right? They pointed out 9-11 would occur, and they also pointed out 10 4 a very big date. So let's look to that date and see what happens. That's prior to the elections, right? Now, also, also, do you realize, and I just found this out today, and I'm going to play a clip, a uh, two-minute clip here. I got a couple two-minute clips to play from the Israeli news service uh, regarding what's going on in the Middle East. 
in Syria, etc. But this is interesting. It brings in the Vatican and the Queen of England. And what they did mention before Christmas 2015 was that this may be the world's last Christmas. Interesting. So let's play this little snippet, a two-minute snippet from Israeli news, to see what the Pope said a year ago, as well as the Queen of England, as reported by Israeli news. in all of this. But anyway, so the Pope says this here, that it would be like the last Christmas there, and says here, because uh, another place, Francis, who previously announced the beginning of World War III, had labeled this year's Christmas as a charade during a mass at a Casa Santa Maria earlier in the month. We are close to Christmas, he says. There will be lights, there will be parties, bright, uh, bright trees. Even activity scenes all decked out while the world continues to wage war, he said earlier in December. All right, so let me take you to the next one, though, that's just as alarming here. And this is what the Queen said. This was on yournewswire.com. We pulled this article here. My wife also sent this to me. Another sister as well shared this with me a little later after my wife did. It says, Queen's 2015 Christmas, Christmas message. Now, she was reporting this for BBC when she began to speak, they had to quickly stop her right on the spot there because of well, they didn't want this out to the world. But someone was kind enough to let us know what she said. The Queen dropped a bombshell yesterday while filming her annual Christmas message on for the BBC, hinting a deep personal regrets over the murder of Princess Diana, a BBC insider claims. Um, just that it was also said that clearly troubled the queen said she knew too much now speaking of diana she knew too much the queen asked her subjects to understand that the royal family simply did what was necessary to ensure their own survival i wonder why they had to pull the plug on this program but here comes the part that resonates with what pope francis has already said Senior BBC production staff and palace advisors scrambled to cancel the take, but not before the Queen express, expressed dark fears that this will be the last Christmas on Earth because mal malvolent forces much stronger than her own are stalking across Europe, gaining ground every day. I hope you enjoy your final Christmas, she said bitterly before BBC staff under strict orders from the palace advisor, canceled the tape and sent junior staff on an early launch. Okay, there's that two-minute clip from Israeli news regarding what the Pope had said. I want to play another one that emphasizes the same thing right here from uh, the same gentleman as at Israeli news. And let's see uh, what this two-minute clip says. Shalom, Chavim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here. And I want to just give you a quick update. We have the phone mounted where you can hear and see me, but I can keep my attention on the road, so don't worry, everything is perfectly safe. Uh, but did want to let you guys know, uh, I have discovered some information in the Russian language news media where Putin inevitably or inevitably has signed a deal for the natural gas off the coast of Israel, the Leviathan uh, fields there, we have discovered some uh, uh, information about that in a little bit of exchange with Brother Conrad this morning, he caused me to go searching because he believed that it was actually a done deal with the uh, meeting between Netanyahu and Putin recently, uh, uh, back last month there. So we did do a little bit of searching there and we found out in the Russian language newspaper that yes, a deal has been signed. Uh, and that uh, this is going to be something that Putin will want to protect. Not only is he going to protect uh, the deal that he signed with Assad, but he's also going to protect a deal that he has with the Israelis as well. Uh, so it could be, lead to a very interesting escalation of violence in the very near future. And maybe the reason why we see Obama so aggressive against uh, Russia right now, because Putin has the deal over Syria now, as the one with the Israelis, where does that leave the United States? We also are looking at some in-depth uh, studies here on the Vatican. 
What are they doing? Why are they in behind this? Why did, uh, uh, why did the Pope say this would be your last Christmas the way you're seeing it now? This could actually have a lot more to do with things than you could ever even possibly imagine. So we are looking into these types of stories, friends, and we're going to share those with you. Uh, some of those starting tonight on Israeli News Live, as well as Israeli News Live live stream. Uh, check out our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. We'll be bringing you stories there as well. We're going to really step up the, uh, the work that we're doing there to get you up to date with what's happening all over the world, especially the Middle East, especially with Russia. And it does appear that NATO is going to launch an attack against Russia. Uh, even some of the Germans are warning Russia that that is coming as we brought that out to you last night. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. Okay, that's another little clip talking about uh, what the Pope has said and also what's really going on with NATO and uh, Russia. So let's look at this a little more closely. And uh, I wanted to play another little clip here. And uh, it talks about Putin being surrounded by NATO military drills. So let's just listen to this for a few minutes. Well, it does not stop at the economy, does it? What comes first, World War Three or the global Brexit recession? <laughs> the world is changing with accelerating speed. To lead and shape a new world order for the 21st century. Secretary Ashton Carter accused Russia of nuclear saber rattling. He promised to counter what he described as Russian aggression by increasing military buildup through NATO's presence near Russia, NATO a key aspect of U.S. security policy. Now, the Baltic Sea region is quickly becoming a friction point between Russia, NATO, and the U.S., with NATO military exercises underway and a lot of close encounters. I was joined earlier by James Carden, Washington correspondent for The Nation magazine. He started by telling me for what NATO is preparing. It was recently announced that uh, NATO is going to be sending in 4,000 uh, troops to Lithuania and Poland as part of the European Reassurance uh, Initiative. Um, that's a $3.4 billion um, initiative designed um, ostensibly to reassure our NATO allies in light of what has been happening uh, in eastern Ukraine. In addition to that, the United States has sent in the USS Donald Cook, which is a um, missile class destroyer um, about 50 miles away from Kaliningrad. Now, Kaliningrad, uh, a lot of Americans don't know, is a Russian port between Poland and Lithuania, and they have a major naval base there. Um, and so the effect of, of, of these um, maneuvers by the United States and NATO um, has been to uh, increase tension in the region. So what exactly is the aggression that they're worried about? I mean, this is a lot of, this is a lot of militarized presence that they're gearing up for. Yeah. What they, what they claim to be very worried about is um, a repeat of what has happened in eastern Ukraine. The entire Europe was calmed down with the knowledge that the Pentagon would do anything in order to protect Europe from Russia. On Monday, the Pentagon deployed a pair of F-22 fighter jets to southeast Romania in an effort to deter hypothetical Russian aircraft. The US Air Force aircraft arrived at the airbase on the Black Sea, less than 400 kilometers away from the Russian military stronghold of Sevastopol on the Crimean Peninsula. The US Air Force has deployed F-15 Eagle Air Superiority Fighter aircraft to 
Iceland and the Netherlands, several NATO countries as well as non-members such as Finland and Sweden are sending planes to Estonia for the first massive air force exercise to feature civilian airport aimed at training for interception of aircraft losing contact inside Finnish airspace. The two-day exercise called Rammstein Allo 1 will kick off at the Estonia's Amare Air Force Base next Thursday. It will be involving warplanes and air crews from Belgium, Spain and Poland, as well as non-NATO members such as Finland and Sweden. Okay, you're seeing this build up on the borders of Russia. This is an emergency broadcast. Okay. Okay, we have about three minutes here before we take a break. And what I want to do in the second half hour is look at uh, what Bible prophecy says about the coming conflict of World War Three, And... Uh, Basically, what you guys can do is, uh, please, I'm going to play it in two parts. I don't think I can get it all in the second uh, half hour. But uh, I'm going to play what one group of uh, Bible believers thinks about uh, what's going on in the world and how it relates to the Bible. And I'd like you people to uh, chime in on this. Uh, I'm not an expert, but maybe you have some agreements or disagreements about what this group says. And... Uh, I think it's important to look at this aspect of it as well. Now, I, I always preface my statements like this. I know there's people that listen to this show that believe the Word of God is the divine Word, and I respect that. But I also know there's a lot of people that don't believe that. And so I try to tell them, if you don't, don't just shut it off. Use this as an opportunity, because I will tell you this. One thing I learned when I lived in Rome for seven years and covered the Vatican is that they copy the Bible. What they do is basically present themselves as the vicar of Christ, present themselves as God on earth, the Christian group. They are not. When you look into the Vatican's religion of Catholicism, it is a pagan religion. They are masquerading and using Jesus and Christian Bible believers as a front. So you have to understand the Vatican Catholicism and their catechism books are not, and all of their rituals is not Christianity. And so when I mention that there's a striking possibility that in the 700s they created the Islamic religion, I'm not bashing anybody who's a Muslim. I'm stating that that religion to me also is not valid, just as Catholicism isn't. And the reason I say that is because when you look at all of the rituals and things they do, it is not Christian or biblical. And what happens? Christians get the bad rap. And what you're seeing is this final conflict between Islam and what is considered to be Christianity, but it uh, really the Vatican has masqueraded as Christians, and they, I believe, have created the whole thing. And all they're doing is now using America as their military weapon and the leaders of the world who they have in their pockets to play this out. And we've shown you that in the geopolitical sense. Now let's look at the biblical side of it and see what you think. And by all means, if you don't agree with certain things, email me at greg. Beacon, that's G-R-E-G-B-E-A-C-O-N, uh, at uh, gmail.com, and express your uh, opinions. We want to be critical thinkers, don't we? See you in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app. 
for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, the rapture will be canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. Okay, welcome back to the second half hour of the Investigative Journal on this June 23rd, 2016 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Okay, now I want to get to what Bible prophecy says about uh, the possibility of World War III coming very, very soon involving uh, NATO, America, lined up against Russia and China and others. Uh, one story I did want to get to, but I'm going to do this tomorrow, is what's going on in Chicago. And it's not, it's underreported, of course. And also there was a uh, person who did a YouTube regarding, he saw huge amounts of trucks in the Illinois area uh, carrying martial law signs, thousands of signs. It's an interesting point. Why are they making the signs if there isn't going to be martial law soon? But let's get to uh, the point I wanted to make in this half hour. And um, this this uh, presentation will take in two parts. I'm going to try to get half of it today and half tomorrow. And if in the meantime you want to comment, send some emails to Greg Beacon, that's uh, G-R-E-G-B-E-A-C-O-N, at uh, gmail.com. And here we go. of our church have a secret, sinister pact to hide from the public 
the most terrible warning encrypted inside our holy Bible, the only prophecy that has remained obscured under thick veils to this day. Because according to the final chapters of the Bible, Obama will not finish his second term. He is the 44th and last president of the U.S. And our country and every American citizen are about to face their greatest bedevilment. From an enemy fiercer and more powerful than ISIS, Al-Qaeda, North Korea, and Iran combined, right now only a handful of church leaders know the true meaning of this biblical prophecy and they swore a blood oath to take this sacred secret to their graves. Because if this leaks out, it will cause panic among all faithful followers of the words of our Lord. Obama himself is unaware of the extent of the massacre that is to come, and there is nothing anyone can do to prevent this from happening. This ancient prophecy is coded within the visions of four men. These four evangelists are John the Apostle, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Ezekiel. They were chosen to give a very precise and terrifying warning of things to come in the end of times. This prophecy will fulfill the act of God, and the world as we know it will perish in flames. Therefore, before going any further, I must warn you, what you are about to see is deeply disturbing, because it will link current events to ancient biblical prophecies step by step. Once you discover the chilling evidence of the words of our Lord coming true, there is no turning back. It is a revelation so powerful when you see the biblical evidence that this great, unavoidable ruination will come to reality. It will simply be impossible for you to go about your daily life like you used to before knowing the truth. And it all starts with one simple question. Does it not seem odd to you that America the richest and most powerful country today, the only country who has liberated other nations from evil, the greatest evangelical nation on the earth, is not even mentioned in the Bible. After all, as we know it, the Bible accurately predicts so many other historical events. The two world wars, man reaching outer space, and the return of the Jews to their homeland after centuries of exile. All of these events were seen and described by the prophets in their writings. America played the key role in all of this. Yet the church does not teach America's place in the Bible, and there is a very good reason for that. One which I will reveal in a few moments. I will show you exactly why this knowledge is a closely guarded secret, and you will see that we are getting closer and closer to fulfilling this ancient prophecy. As the world leaders and their armies are covertly maneuvered into place, in preparation for the events that lead to the second coming of our Lord, most importantly, you will see the exact reason why this prophecy will come true before the 1st of January, 2017. And you will know God's wrath will bestow upon our lands with great vengeance. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Luke 12:5. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Against them he will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. 1 Samuel 2.10 But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John 20.31 As it is God's will that you are here now, witnessing the unmasking of evil, it is the will of our Lord and Savior that you and your family see this and be saved from all the wrongdoings of our times. Just as the Holy Word says, I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16.33 But before we go any further, you need to know just who I am, and how I came into the position of revealing such shocking facts. My name is Nathan Shepard. I have been a fervent Christian ever since I was a child. I have put my life in the service of God committing my time to the study of archaeology and theology, and I have given 17 years of my life to studying the ancient scriptures. As a pastor and teacher to one of the largest universities in New Haven, Connecticut, using my worldly doctor's degree in theology and the history of religions to save our nation's lost souls, once I received illumination about the place of the United States in Bible prophecy, 
Before making this video, I taught for four years the master class for methods of scientific research in religion, preparation, challenges, and possible solutions. Until one day, by divine providence, I made a startling discovery that connected all the hidden clues. You must understand, the holy texts of the Bible are full of metaphors and symbolism because the prophets try to describe things that exist in the future using words available in their time. So when the prophets saw airplanes in their visions, the description would be mount up to heaven, referring to air travel and the air force, just like it will ascend above the heights of the clouds. It will be like the most high is clearly a metaphor for reaching space. The fact that both of these metaphors refer to the nation known to the Bible scholars as Babylon or mystery Babylon is no coincidence. Mystery Babylon is an end times nation. How else would it be able to have an air force and reach space? And it is described in great detail by John the Apostle in the book of Revelation and by the prophets Jeremiah and Isaiah. Holy men who have heard the word of God and carefully put in writing to save our lost souls when the tribulation day comes. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10 Through the account of John the Apostle in the book of Revelation, and through the writings of the prophets Jeremiah and Isaiah, Babylon is hailed as a queen among nations and the lady of kingdoms. Isaiah 47.5-7 it is the youngest and only superpower in the world. Jeremiah 47, Revelations 18. According to the prophets, Babylon reigneth over the kings of the earth. Revelation 17, 18. It was the praise of the entire earth and an astonishment among the nations. Jeremiah 51, 47. Babylon is a democracy weighed down by its huge government. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Babylon destroys her own land with pollution and waste, because thou hast destroyed thy land. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Ask yourself this, how can an early day prophet know about pollution since there is no such thing in ancient times? The answer may be already obvious. Babylon has the most powerful military force on the planet and is called the hammer of the whole earth. The merchants of the world are made rich through trading with this nation, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Is it starting to look like they are telling us about the United States of America? The portraiture gets even more specific from now on. Babylon is praised in the entire world. How is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations. This is a coastal nation with deep water ports and much international trade. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures. Bear in mind that ancient Babylon, current day Iraq, has very limited access to the sea. Babylon has a unique and remarkable beginning different from other nations and has been awe-inspiring from its birth. The U.S. is the first country to successfully become independent from a colonial empire, the British Empire. We speak the English language and we are the descendants of the first British colonies. That is why England is like a mother to the U.S. It fits perfectly with the description in Jeremiah 50, 12. More so, the mother of Babylon has the symbol of the lion. The royal symbol of England is a lion and the mother of Babylon in the end times will be a state of major decline as the end nears. The British Empire that ruled the earth for 200 years is no more. Most of its colonies are independent. The British pound is no longer the world reserve currency. It has been replaced by the dollar. The currency of its daughter, the prophets also foretold that Babylon becomes proud and arrogant and does not consider its end. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasure that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Okay, I did want to add one thing here, before we go any farther. 
you're probably asking, uh, where is the Vatican involved in this? Well, there's a partial, uh, there's an interesting part of history during, prior to the American Revolution, and also the creation of this country, and if you want to call this country Babylon, who really was involved in creating it? And I said many times, there's a lost part of history where you're going to see that the Vatican and the Jesuit order were instrumental in creating America from the beginning, the mother of all harlots. The Vatican was very instrumental in creating this country for an, a hidden agenda and a reason. Let's get back to uh, this interpretation. And and by the way, uh, I'm not. There's many people out there who probably have different interpretations or don't agree with everything. Don't be afraid to call. You know, email me because all we're trying to do here is look at it, look at something. And if something doesn't mesh with your thinking, it's great to know. So let's uh, let's get back to this. Does this sound like American exceptionalism? The strong belief rooted inside our people that America is different from other nations, better than them in every possible way. Even the name Mystery Babylon is deeply symbolic. It's a mystery because the prophets at the time of the visions didn't know of the existence of the North American continent. They literally had no idea what they were actually seeing and described it as best as they could. And in ancient times, Babylon was the greatest city in the world, just like the U.S. is the greatest country in the world today. Ancient Babylon was constructed by people that came from all parts of the ancient world, what we may call today immigrants, just like the United States. This is, again, very, very precise. What about the personification of Babylon in the scriptures as a woman? The prophets used the word her. This is another very precise clue given to us through metaphors and symbolism that are so abundant in the holy book. So I tell you this, what is the most widely known symbol of America? What is the image most immigrants and tourists associate with the U.S.? Is it a woman symbolizing liberty that sits in the harbor of the most important city in the United States? This is very cryptic but important as it shows how accurate the prophecy is. The prophets talk about the U.S. by using its most recognizable monument, the Statue of Liberty. So why on earth are they also calling it the Whore of Babylon? You know, the sculptor of the Statue of Liberty was Auguste Bertoli. He was a mason belonging to the great Masonic Lodge in Paris. Before beginning the Statue of Liberty project, Bertoli was already seeking a commission to construct a giant statue of the goddess of fertility, Isis, as it was known to the Egyptians, or Ishtar, as it was known to the ancient Babylonians. Well, the Romans also adopted this fertility goddess, but they changed the name to Libertas in Latin, or Liberty in English, of course. Libertas is the mythological equivalent of Isis or Ishtar. Okay, now remember this, uh, when he's talking about Libertas, that uh, statue sits above uh, Congress. And when you talk about the Statue of Liberty, Rome's involvement in all of this, the Vatican's involvement with all of this, is very, very apparent. So when you talk about the creation of America, you can't leave out the Vatican's role in this country. It's a well-hidden uh, uh, agenda that the mainstream or most of the alternative media won't talk about. But I mentioned many, many times we need to understand what really happened in the founding of this country and who was behind it. And I say the Jesuit order had a big role in most everything here. And that's why the Vatican is connected to Mystery Babylon and is in fact the mother of it. Let's look further and what uh, this gentleman's having to say. For the Statue of Liberty is also the statue of Isis, or as the Babylons called her, Ishtar, the goddess of fertility, love, and sex. According to the ancient pagan rituals, one could only be purified of a sin after intercourse with a temple priest or priestess of Ishtar. In order for this salvation a gift offering was needed. Ishtar was the patron mother of the temple priestesses and priests. She was the mother of what we would call today prostitution. This is why Ishtar was seen by early Christendom as the whore of Babylon, 
And that is why the Statue of Liberty, the symbol of America, is called by the prophets as the whore of Babylon. Do you think it is a coincidence that the U.S., the home of the greatest and most famous statue of Ishtar, provides 65% of pornographic movies and adult entertainment to the world? Is it just another coincidence that this is the country where sexual liberation originated and spread to the rest of the world? It's not. It's just like the scriptures foretold. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The last clue is the description of Babylon as the daughter of Chaldea. Chaldea is a region in the Middle East, mostly inhabited by Semitic tribes during the time of the prophets. Out of the family of Semitic tribes, the most powerful and influential one today is represented by the Jews, Israelites. According to scripture, Babylon would be home to multitudes of Jews who left the Holy Land. Today, the largest population of Jewish people is found in the United States. Furthermore, 48% of American billionaires are Jewish and have made their wealth in the U.S., contributing to his rise as the world's only superpower. You might recognize some of the names on this list. Okay, he's presenting a list now, and uh, I call these Jews uh, the Pope's uh, papal court Jews. And you might think we're letting the Vatican off the hook here. We're really not. I'm not anyway. And I'm trying to tell you that the horror of Babylon, of course, the horror of in the book of Revelations is, is, uh, uh, is uh, the mother of all harlots, Rome, the Vatican, and riding the beast is <laughs> very simple, the beast in Rome. And who's riding the beast? Uh, just look at your uh, what happened. What that symbolism came out in two years ago, I think, at the Super Bowl. So I'm not letting the Vatican off the hook here. I never do. But there's a very good relationship here between the Vatican and the United States because I contend that if we really understood history, we would see that the Vatican and its tentacles, so the Jesuit order, created this country for a hidden reason, and it's playing out today. Now he lists some of these names, and I'm not going to go over them. You can you can check out uh, his work at World War III and Bible Prophecy, and you'll see a number of names uh, that you're very familiar with: Murdoch, Jeff Zucker. The daughter of the Chaldeans, the nation that the Jewish people helped rise to superpower status, is the United States of America. The U.S. today has the most powerful economy and military, controls worldwide commerce, is proud and arrogant, has the most developed air force and space program, and is the envy of the world. It houses the whore of Babylon, is the daughter of the British Empire, and the child of the Chaldeans. And unfortunately, for every living American, mystery Babylon. Why? Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Hell for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be she may be healed. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon, and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans, because the Lord hath spoiled Babylon, and destroyed out of her the great voice. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved. And the cry is heard among the nations. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. All three prophets tell of the fall of Babylon, the destruction of the United States of America as we know it. This is not an event that happened to ancient Babylon in the past. History has never recorded the fall of a state or a city in the way described by the prophets. And just like all the events accurately predicted by the Bible, the two world wars, the rise and fall of communism, and the return of the Jewish people to their homeland, and so many others, this too will happen. The only questions left to ask are, who will cause its fall? When and how? Isaiah 13, 5. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Jeremiah 53, for out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate. Jeremiah 59, 
For I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. Now draw a straight line north of the U.S. through the Arctic, the end of heaven, and you will find the answer. Russia is the great enemy of Babylon, the enemy destined to destroy it. The Holy Scriptures is again very precise. Even though it has been written centuries before the U.S. or Russia became world powers, it clearly describes both countries that are prophesied to start World War III. And at the start of the World War III, Russia will use a very special weapon, the weapon of indignation against the whole territory of the U.S., and then lead the invasion of a great assembly of nations. Now that we know who is responsible, the next logical question is, when will it happen? As you have seen before, we are going through the biblical end times. Babylon America has fulfilled the prophecies that foretold its coming, and now, according to the Bible, it will meet its demise. The clues about when the great disaster shall befall it are hidden in the book of Daniel, another major biblical prophet. In chapter 1140 of his prophecies describes a great war fought by two kings at the end times, one from the north and one from the south. So, if we could connect these two kings to two current world leaders, we would know how close we are to the destruction of Babylon. The key to understanding the clue of the two kings is the position of Jerusalem, because this is where Daniel had his revelations. To the north of Jerusalem is Moscow, birthplace of Vladimir Putin. What else does the prophecy say about the king of the north? And the king shall do according to his will. Putin does what he wants. He controls the media, the military, and the economy of Russia. Neither shall he regard the gods of his fathers, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. The fact that gods is not written with a capital letter is a clear clue to what exactly the prophet is referring to. Communism. The gods of the communists are Lenin, Marx, Stalin, who have ruled Russia for over 80 years. They are practically worshipped by the Russian people, and statues and pictures of them were everywhere across the USSR. Okay, we got to take a break. Uh, well, we got to take a break because it's the end of the show. I'll get to the uh, second part of this tomorrow. We'll look at who the king of the south is. And if you have any questions or you don't agree with things, just email me, gregbeacon at gmail.com. Good night. See you tomorrow. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our god and creator for his holy nation the only kingdom that will last forever thank you for listening